Now that we've introduced ourselves on the board, I want to move on to our first lesson of the semester, which is about pitching a TV show. The first half of our semester is going to be mainly based in creative aspects of broadcast production, and the second half of the semester will be definitely more geared toward the technical aspects. So let's think about where all great TV shows begin, which is at an idea, or what we call a pitch. We call it a pitch because you're going to be pitching it to people, and hopefully they'll swing at it and want to take it on. So, in our situation, in our scenario here, you have the opportunity to pitch a new live action TV program for television, and you can pick from one of the genres listed below. You get to do a science fiction show, a romantic comedy or drama, the workplace sitcom, a horror or thriller show, a straight drama. Please, no animation or reality shows at this stage. I just want to think about live action fictional programs. Remember that you're going to hopefully have a future with this show. So while the pilot focuses on the short term in the first episode, you want to make sure that your show, your pitch idea has somewhere to go, right? So it can evolve. In other words, you don't want it self-contained. You want to lay out a plan that can be further developed as your show grows. By choosing a genre, you can set a lot of things like the mood, the tone, the writing style, the audience's expectations. So again, those wide range of genres I gave you, sci-fi, romantic comedy, drama, workplace sitcom, horror, thriller, or drama, straight drama shows, um, just allows you a starting point. All of you watch television, all of you have enjoyed television series of one kind or another. So think about the genre they may be in uh, and what you might want to work on. Having a genre doesn't always mean you're locked into one type of story. It just means that it's easier to market and sell your idea to someone, uh, which is the whole point of a pitch. So if you pick a genre and build from that, you can still be creative and original, but you have a framework that you can use to sell your idea. All right, we're going to use the example that I posted in the discussion board as we move through this lesson. The example I posted um, came from a student in an earlier semester. The show was called Final Break, and the genre is romantic comedy slash drama, right? So that's our genre. That's what was picked to set the mood and the tone and the setting and audience expectations and all that kind of stuff. So we're starting with the romantic comedy drama, and now we have to come with come up with what we call the what if premise. Virtually every single TV show can be distilled down into a basic what if question. For example, if you said this, what if a documentary crew filmed a small paper company? That's obviously the US version of The Office. Or a more complex what if, like what if a chemistry teacher with cancer started cooking meth to fund his medical treatments, which of course is Breaking Bad. This what if is the basis of your show. It's what sets it apart, it's the hook, it's what's gonna make it sell. And it doesn't need or even want to weigh it down with a lot of subplots or other ideas yet. You wanna be able to distill it into a very simple what if that hooks the viewer and makes it different and stand out. For example, again, Seinfeld was famously pitched as, quote, what if we did a show about nothing, unquote. That's what set it apart. That's what made Seinfeld one of the most successful programs of all time. For our example, the what if is what if is a <clears throat> excuse me, what if a polygamous family moves into a new area slash neighborhood that is not so welcoming? That's our first what if in the example. So that's going to form the basis of everything else we do. Of course, you'll come up with a different what if for your idea. Now that we have a what if in a genre, we're going to develop some characters, right? Because the essence of all good television is characters. Characters are why people tune in week after week and what drives the plot of each episode. Try to come up with between two and five main characters as any more becomes difficult to main manage um, in a pitch, right? Uh, seven main characters, please, being your upper limit at, at this stage. Uh, your character should be round. That means the characters have multiple facets, not just an angry woman or a strong hero. You want them to have strength and weaknesses, which give your characters a chance to grow. Um, you want to make sure that your characters are filled with desires and fears. 
their ability or inability to get over their fear of being poor, of being alone, of space aliens, of spiders, whatever it is, is what will drive characters each episode and shows you the goals in the series, right? Always be asking yourself, what do my characters want? That's the journey that we watch in any television series. Oftentimes, of course, the characters don't get what they want, which keeps it going and allows us to engage in their process. Um, you want to make sure that characters also have agency. And what I mean by that is that they drive their own story, right? They make choices. So a good character makes choices which push forward the plot. They make mistakes. They try and fix things. They go to parties. They get a job. They go to college because it's something the characters would do, not something the writer needs them to do, right? This concept of agency um, is what distinguishes good writing from um, sort of uh, uh, boilerplate um, paint by numbers writing. Okay. We're looking again at our example for final break, which is our romantic comedy drama about the polygamous family. We have three main characters. We have a, uh, the Heckler family. David Heckler is the man of the house and he's born and raised into the polygamous lifestyle. He's good natured, but is often blind to low key conflicts. He doesn't always see what's going on around him. He recently added a new wife to the family who is pregnant. So while he has the best family, the family's best interests at heart, he doesn't always see the, uh, the growing problems. Another main character is Lisa Heckler. This is David's first wife. She's not familiar with the polygamous lifestyle, but was very aware of the possibility of a new family addition, uh, although not so much open to the idea. So Lisa got into this knowing it could happen, but it was hoping it wouldn't. Right. But here we are. Here she is. A new uh, the family is, uh, is growing. Um, she will she considers herself the first lady of the house. Not only was she the first wife, she really thinks of herself as the as the head woman. Um, she's constantly looking to assert her dominance in this new setting. Um, she always has the family's best interests at heart, but is also secretly plotting against everyone for her own personal gain. So she has two agendas, which creates a more complicated character. And then we have Marianne Heckler. She's David's new second wife. Um, she was born and raised in a polygamous family, but just not in Utah, and one that had to kind of live in the shadows. She's usually the peacemaker and is always trying to avoid conflict, um, knowing that she's the new member of the house, but she will want to exert some control sooner or later. She's naive to almost everything that Lisa says because she's really focused on David, right? So this is our triangle that sets up final break. These are the, the general main characters that have been set out. Of course, there were other characters that we're not going to delve into for the pilot. Um, but these are our three main characters that we're going with for this pitch. You'll have your own set of main characters based on your genre and your what if, right? I'm looking forward to seeing those, of course. Now you want to come up with your title. Right? You might think it's odd that the title doesn't come first, but you want to make sure what it is you have before you even title it. Right? So you've got your genre, you have your what if, and you have your main characters. Now consider your title, which of course can change at any time, but the title is a main part of selling and pitching an idea to anyone. So obviously the catchier the better. Most TV shows are based on some sort of play on words, um, and having a good turn of phrase can ensure that show is immediately recognized. Take Mad Men, right? Mad Men is about ad agencies in the 60s and the men who work there, uh, most of whose lives are spiraling out of control. It also has a meaning in that mad Madison Avenue, which is where ad agencies tended to be, right? So it has a double, double meaning in a way. Uh, community was a show about community college, but also a group of close-knit friends. Again, a sort of double meaning. So the importance of a great title cannot be underestimated and one that you want to think about. Uh, in fact, one of the things that I thought about this pitch that I'm sharing with you from an earlier semester is I'm not sure Final Break is a very good name. We talked about this and I'll ask you in our discussion board as well. Um, I'm not sure Final Break is the best name. I'm not sure what I would have come up with, but I don't really see how Final Break relates to the show, something we'll talk about as we go further. All right, another important aspect of a TV pitch is what we call a log line. 
A log line is a one or two sentence description of your show that's designed to sell producers and audiences on the idea. It typically tells or sets up the main agenda of the show and its main characters. And if your concept can't easily translate to a log line, it might not be very marketable. If it's too complicated and hard to sum up quickly and, and uh, attractively, you might want to rethink how to streamline it, at least for the pitch, right? Um, your log line should tell people what they're watching and what clever or hook or premise there is in the show and what they can expect to see. For our example in Final Break, the log line is, the transition from small farm town in Salt Lake City, Utah, to Hartsdale, New York, will be one of the heckler's greatest challenges. They are a small polygamous family from Utah, learning the ways of suburban life and facing even more challenges as they are expecting new members in the family. So that really sets the show up, which will of course unfold as it progresses. So make sure your log line is uh, catchy, short, and intriguing. You also wanna make sure that you're thinking about current trends. You wanna research current televised uh, programming and learn about current trends or opportunities. Um, use the trades as they call them, deadline, variety, to keep up with current Hollywood TV trends. The more you know about what you're cur what's currently hot and selling, the better chance you are, uh, better chance you have to please the audience and anyone who might be um, uh, uh, funding your show, right? Um, you want to play close to pay close attention to what you and your friends like. Oftentimes, we are the best audience. When I think about Final Break, one of the things that made it work. Um, is thinking about who this was for. As you can see on the example, our audience was primarily women 18 to 36 because of the wives and the family drama being so central to the series. But it also played off the idea of things like sister wives and the real housewives, right? That kind of person who watches those shows would very likely enjoy Final Break because while Final Break is not a reality show, it's definitely influenced by the reality genre and the kind of storylines and things that you see happening on Sister Wives, um, The Real Housewives, etc. Right. So thinking about um, selling your, pro pitching your project in relation to other things is always a good idea. So I want you to go to this week's folder and com complete the pitching a TV show discussion board and assignment. Please post your work in a time. Uh, in time for us all to check it out and have a nice judgment-free discussion. So now's your chance to be creative, and I really want you to go for it, and I look forward to talking about it virtually online. Thank you.